Start game now. Welcome retro fans to another edition of the No Swear Gamer. On today's episode, we're going to continue our ABCs of retro series. Now during this series, we're going through the alphabet one letter at a time and picking a game that starts with that letter. We are now on the letter X, so we're almost at the N. Last time I gave you this hint, it's a Marvel NES game. Uh, NES as in Nintendo Entertainment System and Marvel as in the comic book uh, company that came up with such comics as X-Men. That's right, today we're going to do X-Men also known as Uncanny X-Men, but if you look at the side here, it's just X-Men, so we're just going to go with that for now. So, yeah, we're going to do LGN's X-Men. It is a game with a terrible reputation, but as someone who has played games like E.T. and Tax Avoiders, terrible reputations don't scare me away at all, and sometimes I find out that they're really not as bad as people say they are. I'm joined today by my X-Men Alpha comic number one, which I got out of the Retro Junk Box, which you can check out in episode three of my show. Now, taking a look at uh, this cartridge, um, basically looks like a comic book cover. I wouldn't be surprised if this is not original, because sometimes with these licensed games, they just took like a movie poster or comic book title uh, cover, and they just put it right on the game. So I don't know if this is original, but it is kind of cool. I do dig the X-Men. Check it out. Storm's in her Mohawk phase. How about that? And it's part of the Power Play series, the same series as Friday the 13th came from. So we know it's got to be good, right? So let's go ahead and put... X-Men or Marvel's X-Men or the Uncanny X-Men into our Nintendo Entertainment System and find out if it's worth our time or not. Let's go to the game. X-Men is from 1989, brought to us by LGN, which stands for License Junk on Nintendo. Magneto is up to his evil tricks again, and it's up to you, the X-Men, to take him down. And in this case, because the X-Men are constantly rotating cast of characters, it includes six. It includes Wolverine, Cyclops, Storm, Colossus, Nightcrawler, and Iceman. X-Man is an overhead running gunner, just like Commando in the arcade and on the Nintendo. It is for one or two players. Two players is a simultaneous play. It is comprised of four missions to start with that you can select from. There's also a practice mission you can pick. And once you defeat the four main missions, you can unlock the fifth and final mission. Each mission is a large overhead world, usually with branching paths and lots of different portals to go from here to there. So there's a little bit of non-linear gameplay in it, but of course you have to get to the same goal in each one. So kind of figuring out the maze is part of the game. If you get to the end, there is typically a boss. The bosses in this game comprise of the White Queen, Juggernaut, Sabretooth, and Boomerang. I really don't know who Boomerang is. I've heard the other ones, but not Boomerang. If you defeat all those guys, then you can go to the last mission and face Magneto. Now, when you face a boss, they drop a computer disc that you're supposed to pick up, and then you run away, kind of almost Metroid style, where there's a timer and you have to escape the level before it goes down to zero. But an interesting thing I found is it appears that you don't really have to fight him. You can just run away, and it has kind of the same effect. I don't know how much this affects the gameplay, but I looked at a speed run where the person who did it didn't face any of the bosses, so it might be possible to just avoid him. How fun. How great. Now, as you go through the missions, there are items that you can pick up, including a smart bomb that destroys everyone on the screen, keys, which you'll sometimes need to open up locked doors, there is a temporary invincibility, which is very helpful. There's also an item that freezes all the enemies on screen for a short period of time. There is a magnet, which is a bad item. It will actually freeze you, hold you down while the enemies attack you. And then finally, health. Now, health is really important in this game because there aren't really any lives in this game. Basically, you get all six characters at your disposal, but once you lose one, you can't go back to them again. So if you lose Wolverine in the first mission, you'll never ever get him again. There's no rescuing or resurrecting of characters. An interesting gameplay mechanic though, is that at the beginning of each mission, you have to pick two, whether you're doing a one player or two player game. Now, if you're doing a two player game, 
one player plays as one character and the one other is the other. Very simple, you can totally understand that. But in a one player game, the computer will control one of the characters with very poor AI. I mean, this, this character is just dumb. Now the enemies are dumb too, but there's so many of them, they'll still attack you and hurt you. And what's really hard in this game is that it scrolls with your character. So you need to have both characters near the part of the screen where you want to scroll. Sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes maybe to the left or right. And so it's often I found that my character would get stuck behind a wall. Now you can hit the select button to switch characters and control the other character as well. But a lot of players just often let their other character deplete their health until they're gone and then go on with the mission just by themselves. Would have been nice if LJN would have let you have just controlled one character at a time without the computer partner. The uh, controls are somewhat basic. Three of your characters, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Colossus are basically hand-to-hand -hand combat kind of guys. So you can go up to a character and punch or kick them and that's about that. You can also jump but this was pretty much useless. Nightcrawler, however, has a very cool ability where he can walk right through walls, which can be very helpful in this game. However, as he does it, he loses health, so you have to be careful because you, you can actually die just by walking through walls. Three of the other characters uses projectiles. They shoot stuff. So you got Cyclops, Storm, and Iceman, who are all shooting characters. But Storm and Iceman also have the ability to fly, so it's like you hit the jump button and hold it, and you can actually go a little quicker over terrain, which is a little bit helpful, but in the end wasn't that that big of a deal but the the projectile characters are very nice uh, at attacking characters from the distance every character kind of has their own little feel some are quicker than others when I was playing as Colossus who's just this big metal brute he did seem to take a beating better than the other characters so yeah you can you can feel a little bit of distinction with the characters the graphics in this game are well they might be the worst on the system or one of the worst everything is kind of bland the, uh, outside of the portraits at the beginning of the game I mean you can at the beginning of the game you can see the characters a little up close they look kind of nice but the backgrounds they're just a mess everything kind of blends in together nothing really sticks out I thought the enemies kind of looked bland as well they were all basically one color they didn't really stick out they kind of they as you're playing they kind of looked more like just blobs and actual characters and it's sometimes hard to differentiate what a floor is, what an obstacle is, what a wall is, because you were never quite sure what it is. It's not like other games where you see a spike pit and, oh yeah, if I step on that, it hurts. This is a game where this pattern is safe, this pattern is not. Who knows why? Circles hurt you, squares don't, or vice versa. So yeah, it was just kind of a blah kind of game. Music and sound was basically forgettable as well. Nothing really catchy to me there. It is a fairly family friendly game with some cartoony fighting. There is no blood or gore. So basically you punch a guy, they blink and they go away when defeated. Yep, the only unfamily friendly portion of this game might be what someone might say as they play this game in frustration. Watch your mouth around the little kids, please. On eBay, this game goes for a little bit more than average, probably because it has the X-Men name and nothing else. Loose copies were about $8, that includes the shipping. Complete copies were averaging about $30. So would I recommend X-Men? No, no, no. Why? <sighs> Where do I begin? It's amazing the things you take for granted in video games that's missing in this game. Some basic things that are not even here. For instance, your life bar. Now, you would think a game that relies a lot on your life bar would have it prominently displayed. And it does when you pause the game. It never displays it while you're actually playing. So if you want to see where you're at, you actually have to pause the game, which is a very big burden. And to make things even more fun, when you're about to die, it gives you that annoying beep, beep, beep sound just about two seconds before you actually die. Yep, the only way you could see this life bar while you're playing the game is if you had one of those old controllers that had slow motion where they pushed pause several times repeatedly. But of course, doing that will probably cause a seizure in half the population, so I don't recommend it. The collision detection in this game is terrible. I mean, hitting the enemies was almost more difficult than anything else, especially with the hand-to-hand -hand combat guys. Projectile people, not so much, but there's many times where I was trying to hit a guy and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't figure out why I wasn't making connections. Of course, they didn't seem to have much of a problem hitting me sometimes. Not to mention that it takes away temporary invincibility. You know how most games when you get hit, your guy will blink for a few seconds and you're temporarily invincible? 
This game doesn't have it at all, and now you'll realize just how important a feature that is in games with life bars, because there was many times where I had a lot of health, doing just fine, and then all of a sudden I get stuck somewhere. Maybe I'm on like a, a floor that has diamond patterns that for some reason hurt me and I didn't know it, but because I'm stuck for a split second, it just quickly drains my life bar because there is no getting away from it. There was no temporary invincibility to give me a chance to breathe. Or there's all these doors with barriers, and they're like electricity barriers where they flash for a while, then, hey, look, the door's open. No, it's not. It's deadly. Now it's open. Come on in. No, not now. And it was so hard to judge because there wasn't really a rhyme or reason to the pattern that you get stuck in the barrier. And zzz, that's it. You're gone. Oh, that was so frustrating. And the level design is very confusing. This might be one of the worst level design games there is on the Nintendo. A lot of the backgrounds look so much the same to each other that it's very easy to get lost in these levels because you often have to go from screen to screen to screen to screen to find the final boss of that level. And to make things even worse, sometimes you can go up and down the screen, but it's very hard to tell if you can. There's many times where I went through a screen once or twice before I realized, hey, I could push up and go further. I didn't realize that. So the level design I thought was extremely poor. Now, the uh, enemies are also a burden because they respawn constantly. I don't know who, okay, who out there likes respawning enemies? Anybody? Any, oh, you in the back? Oh, you're just, you're just being sarcastic. Put your hand down. Yeah, respawning enemies are all over the place and they're very hard to avoid and there's no rhyme or reason to where they respawn from. All of a sudden you'll be standing and out of, out of the blue, right in front of you, an enemy will respawn and of course if you defeat him, another one respawns and because of the collision detection is so bad, you'll immediately lose all your health within a split second from respawning enemies. <sighs> Yep, so there you go. And of course, there's your partner AI that is just terrible that just makes more of a headache for you. What I think they should have done with this game is make it like the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game on the Nintendo, which came out in the same year. They, If they would have made this a side-scroller, and maybe had different buildings where you can go up just like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game, I think this game would have been infinitely better. It actually might have been a very good game, but overall, it is a game that I would not recommend. Now, it's not to say there's not some enjoyment in it. There is a little bit of enjoyment in it. I did have a little bit of fun trying to figure out the levels, but it's one of those things where just as I was getting in the groove, something frustrating would happen and would discourage me. So where would I rank it? Well, I think this should compete with The Addams Family. The Addams Family is another Nintendo game I reviewed licensed property it felt like a rush job kind of like this and it had very frustrating moments in it and felt like it was almost impossible to beat even though it probably wasn't it was one of those games where for a moment it's fun and then it gets frustrating that's that's like the x-men as well but i'm going to give the adams family a little bit of a nod because it has better graphics better sound and a better level design as well so there you go x-men out of 30 games i have now ranked is going to be my number 27 game all right, so there you go. Uh, oh, it's time for our X-Men haiku of the day. Who needs Magneto when LGN was able to beat the X-Men? Yep, that's right. Yep, LGN, you did a pretty good job beating these guys down. All right, so next up is the letter Y. Why? Because I like you. And here's my hint. Do you hear a baby crying? Because next game is going to be Yoshi's Island. Yep, I'm just going to give it out right now because over at the Retro League forums, which can be found at forums.retroleague.com, it's going to be the first listener game of the week where any listener to the Retro League or, hey, if you're just listening to me, you can go over there too and sign up. It's a pretty good, cool podcast can just kind of give your own feedback and thoughts on the game. What do you remember about the game? And if you played it recently, what are your current thoughts? Love to hear it. So just go over to forums.retroleague.com. It's going to be the game of the week for September 29th, 2014. So for that week right there, of course, if it's beyond that date, you can still go there and you might be able to find a thread. So there you go. Anyways, you can also like me on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter. Just don't follow me in real life. That's called stalking. That's wrong. But you can like me in real life. I'm a pretty nice guy. And if you like videos like this, would you please consider clicking the like and subscribe button here on YouTube? That would mean a lot. Anyways, thank you for giving me a little part of your day. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on the No Swear Gamer. Take care, everybody.